Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for bearing with us. I hope that you took a stretch and got some water or whatever you need to stay hydrated, happy, and healthy. We did the same for ourselves and now we are back. Uh, and we're gonna jump right back into our story. As the TARDIS has lifted back off, the screeching sound that you all heard earlier uh, starts off harsh again, but quickly this time regulates into a soft hum, a normal level feeling. Uh, doctor, you are able to finally adjust your footing uh, as the TARDIS is rematerializing, not crash landing, in the space where it's supposed to be. Oh. Okay, again, I pull another monitor. Like, I push the one that had um, <coughs> Madame on it and push her away and I pull another one across to look at the, the date and time that we landed in. It's correct. You are in the center, the heart of London, uh, tucked away into a nice little corner here. Uh, 1890 is the year you are, you are where you're supposed to be. 1890, okay, in London, so no one talks weird like you three. By the way, names? Uh, oh, uh, right. uh, Ernie, Ernest, er Ernest, Ernest Howe. Ernest, pleasure to meet you. New hands, sorry about this. And I just shake and the hands are so clammy. So... Old hands, <laughs> good to meet you. Um, okay, Ernest, you two? Siddeley, Siddeley where? Siddeley. Okay, I like, I recognize you. I don't know if I'm just new eyes, so everything's new but old. You, Hi. You might. Hi. Um, hey, Siddeley, Ernest, love the names. You? I put my hand out to shake yours, and I just say, uh, Doctor Lucretia Wen. Doctor, Doctor, your Doctor. I'm the doctor. I'm a doctor yeah. too. Your doctor as well. Let me take. We're all and doctors. You. Well, we're yeah. We all have our. <laughs> now, isn't this fun? Um, well, I'm the doctor, or just doctor. That's fine. Um, your doctor. Do you so not have another name? None that I go by anymore. Doctor's fine. Okay. Hmm. I. Like, oh yes, Ernest. Like... You got it back. Is it like a, is it like a, oh gosh, is it like an alien thing, the no name thing, or is it no like name. a you thing? Like, do, do, uh, I, you can ignore, you know, I was just wondering if most no, aliens no, no. don't Ask have names. Questions. There are no, there are no silly questions. I want to see enjoy the curiosity. Um, the only thing is our friend Or do you like choose outside. not to have? Uh, oh, we choose, the oh. it's complicated. Do we, to, do we need to look? like from and i'm gesturing to the monitor look like we're from 1890. i mean i suppose I you can if you, you would like um how do you is this okay how uh i'll pull up another <laughs> monitor and just pull up like a bunch of windows of different like news clippings and stuff of what people would wear do you have anything like this on you um i don't know if you i have nothing on me nothing what I have on well, me. Well, I have my beer on me. But if you give me a moment, because my shoes are currently too small for my feet, and the sh everything I'm wearing feels very sweaty. I'm very sweaty. I think I'm sweating. Um, you are quite you are. quite sufficiently. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna find my wardrobe. The wardrobe room. Um, I I'll be honest. I'm not entirely sure where it is, but I'm gonna keep walking because that usually works. You all of you stay here. Um. Bye. I just walk away. I uh, just, just turn and walk down the stairs and into a room. Bring some for us. Yeah, of course. I I think I figured out your sizes and just walk away. <laughs> uh, Lucretia turns to Sida with the biggest, like, what the fuck look on their face. <laughs> um, Sida, explain what? now. Uh, first, Ernie has to promise he isn't going to try to run away again. It's 1890, and that seems dangerous. Is it actually eight? Well, I won't leave if it's 1890. Don't leave. It's definitely 1890 outside. 
How? Okay. Sure. Why not? Okay. So, before I couldn't tell you because it was classified, but we literally traveled through time in a spaceship, so I figure it's probably fine now. Uh, I work for an organization called UNIT that studies alien cultures, strange phenomena, and prepares to defend the planet against any potential attacks that may came, come from Is hostile species light years Is away. Is he a hostile no. species? He's not a hostile species, no. He's kind of a legend. He's larger than life. Every story I've ever heard about him is incredible and completely true. Oh, man. Okay. And, okay, and so he's a, he's a good alien. Two hearts, good, just a guy. Okay. It's fine. Just a, so, he helps I, people. He helps people like an interdimensional like a doctor <laughs> i get it like i get it doctor yeah. is he a healer does he like heal people like no a i think a lot of the files are lost but there's a there's a woman who used to run with him uh a rose tyler she, it's a long story she's not here anymore forget about that she's she said that he's the kind of person who makes you better just by being around him and every report from everyone who's ever traveled with him talks about the incredible things that they saw and how many of them came from him i've never i've never left north carolina before uh, big jump for you. Is it safe? To the degree that anything is safe. I mean, you could walk down the street in 2022 and get hit by a car. Okay. So okay, just stay sure. out of the way of stray carriages, I guess. I can do that. They move slower than cars. I think. I've never and they're much louder. Lucretia, as this conversation continues, that pang, that sort of feeling drawing you earlier returns. And it isn't, you look around this place, the inside of this box it's not remotely familiar to you, but now that the sound of its movements have changed from the distressing, screeching, struggling sound that they were earlier to this sort of natural hum that is going on now, that's when that kind of feeling reverberates your chest ever so slightly but just the faintest feeling of familiarity I think like listening to Siddeley explain as much as she's going to explain like like Lucretia's face is very much reading a, like, okay, fine, I'll play along. We've transported to 1890. Like, is this one of your, like, LARP things? Like, like the things that some of my coworkers are really interested in. Like, I'll just play along. Sure, fine. Um, but the sound, like, keeps ringing, almost, like, echoing as, as it seems to be, like, reverberating against this deep memory that I have. Um, and, uh, the both of you watch as a, a look of, like, realization washes over, um, my face, and, um, I think my mouth falls open slightly, and Lucretia just says, 
This is so strange. Speaking of strange, um, I walked into the library and there was a swimming pool in there. Is that normal? I feel like that's not normal. Um, I mean, I do mind. I don't do like reading with. Uh... By the way, I got all of you outfits, and I pull out. Um, all of you can describe what you think I would have gotten all of you, but I pull out um, t- <laughs> and era appropriate outfits, <laughs> all for somehow the exact sizes that you needed. Um, so convenient. Uh, so convenient. Um, and just goes and how do I look? This feels more me. Um, not time appropriate, I know, but it's flowy, you know. I, I kind of like it. I like the color. Thank you. It reminds me of something. Um, I felt right. Like a minion. A minion. <laughs> sorry, it's a, a. Sorry, it's a 2022. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I mean, matter. I know it, it looks nice. It looks nice. Well, thank you. Um, minion. I'll look that up later. No, don't. I... No. Sorry. Pre- I do... like it. Thank you. And and the the colors remind me of and Lucretia has this other jacket I think in their purse, um, and they pull it out and they're just like, and they're gonna put this on and they take off their lab coat and they put this other jacket on, and they're just like, hey, same colors, look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, all doctors same colors. We're matching. I feel like this is this was a match made in heaven. By the way, um, how did you get in here? I realized I probably should have asked this before I take took you to another time. Did you let them in? And I just, I just not. ask around just she to knocked. the air. You knocked. <laughs> Did you let them in? I'm just the... Just... Is... Are you nothing, talking to the boss? Nothing yes, different you is heard to any of the three of you. Uh, but Doctor, the... The wheezing of the TARDIS just changes just slightly in the pitch that you recognize to be, yes, dummy, I let them in. I would have been fine <laughs> if you just give me a few more minutes. I was just resting. Um, but we need to hurry. Um, I did drop us a bit, maybe about two minutes before the last call of our green friend. I'm forgetting her name, Madam. Um, Madam, I'm just gonna call her Madam for now until everything kicks back up. Um, but how are these? And I just pull up the outfits that I got everyone, um, if anyone wants to change. You don't need to. Honestly, um, it's not odd. I mean, it is odd if we came up in, I suppose, our outfits, but I don't plan on changing. So if you don't want to, that's fine. I'll grab the clothes that he's giving me. And uh, I imagine like, it, even though like, there is some cool, like frilly, like, detailed stuff from this time period he just grabs the most basic like peasant wear for <laughs> ernie uh, oh, thanks okay doc. yes you can have that thanks doc i'll just doc, okay. i'll go i'll go change yes uh, were there suspenders go... in 1890 is that a thing i think so yeah yeah because they I'm had those, wait were yeah, there what yeah yeah suspenders okay cool <laughs> um i will just add suspenders to my outfit because I think Lucretia's wearing like this like linen top and they move and they put this on instead and that's tucked into like dark brown pants. Um and I think I just add the suspenders to the look and that's it. <laughs> good Looking call. Nice. Looking good. Love it. How about you, Dr. Ware? Sidith b- takes the clothes, but I think genuinely the doctor grabbed the outfit she's wearing in the modern day, but the 1890s version. It's just like a gray <laughs> sure. military dress with a like floor length skirt, kind of like a governess dress, exact same shade, right? A, uh, time appropriate hat. <sighs> yes. Oh my God. With like the pleated. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We Love need that. to hurry. Um, so... Oh yes, Ernest. Well, th- so. There was kind of like an explosion happening in the last yes. call. Yeah. We're not, that's not, that's is that exactly our, that's in. our problem? Yeah. Okay. That's, of course, that's our problem. Okay. It's, it'll be fun. Uh, it is at this time that a rapid uh, knocking at the uh, side of the TARDIS door, uh, the TARDIS does not open like it did uh, for all of you. Um, you hear the knocking from inside and this stout kind of sharp voice like doctor 
Oh, I think that's for me. And I'll rush to the door and open and poke my head out. Hello? Uh, you are six, six zero or six, six one? Six one. <laughs> six one. You uh, look out, scan the horizon. I'm going to close the door you're... and be like, I'm going to close the door. <laughs> There's no one there. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, doctor. And you hear the, the rapping again. I think the kids playing games. I open the door again. Hello, who is it? <laughs> I'm down here, for goodness sake. Oh. <laughs> you, your eyes cast downwards uh, as you you see the bare and bald, thumb-headed figure of a short, stout, uh, sort of a, a, a brownish-colored, uh, very literally thumb-shaped gent uh in armor um uh, sorry not in armor in a uh in a, a three-piece suit uh Ooh. this time the last time you saw him <laughs> he was in armor uh, uh all Hello right you, you don't know who i am i guess but it's strax oh yes i remember you and i look up i look behind the door to the other and go i don't remember them and i stick my head back out yes how can i help you the lady madam vastra and vastra. jenny can not be seen on the streets right now you oh. need to get <laughs> upstairs to the loft okay thank you um I'll, put, I'll open a door, just open it wide and just go, everyone, we need to get out. Um, this is my friend Holy that I remember, shit. but not quite remember. Strax? Strax. Strax? Strax. <sighs> that is. Strax. That is my name. Yes. They're going to lead us to Madame Vastra. That was the green, the wonderful green lady that we saw in the monitors and the explosion that happened behind them. Well, oh my on. god. This is. We moved. Oh, the box moved. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Please space and time. This, this is what they tend to do. Please All right. follow <sighs> along with me and don't think of anything funny because I will vaporize you with my what? lava razors. Huh? He says that. I he turn to sit a, he Is he being a serious? Santarns are not really the joking type, so... I would, I, I would, I, what? let's go, let's go. Okay. What? This is, it's his species. Okay. Santara. Another, another alien? Yeah, let's go. All right. Off we are. Stay in line. And he just like marches kind of like hobbly, uh, leading you through Good some night. back alleys. Uh, at, and into the back door of a, a walk-up apartment uh, building. Nice. Uh, quite nice, actually. Uh, as you walk your way up, you are uh, let in to a fine uh, apartment uh, with a lovely kind of well-lit chandeliered dining area. Uh, Jenny and Madame Vastra sit at a table, arms clasped and watching the door for the second that you walk in as they both come to a stand. Hello, um, you called. Oh, me, my yes. friends. Doctor, doctor, uh, doctor. Uh, right? Goodness, I, I'm sure you're all very lovely and very capable in whatever it is that you do. Uh, Trauma surgery. Oh. Uh, right. I'm going and, in for a handshake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I uh, Vastra, the green one, does not and stares oddly at your hand uh, as her human girlfriend intercepts and does grab your hand and 
sorry for her rudeness. Uh, <laughs> just doesn't non-humans, you know. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. I think quietly, like under her breath to herself, Sita is looking at Madame Vastra and just says, oh my god, she's even more beautiful in person. And is like a little <laughs> bit choked up. <laughs> she notices. Uh, <laughs> and the two of them kind of take a step back and uh, so um, you heard the explosion, I'm sure. Yes. That didn't look good. No. Unfortunately, I had hoped to get you here before things escalated. There was quite a disturbance on the streets. But unfortunately, What kind it's... of disturbance? Well... Are you familiar with uh, the reptiles of Earth's past? Like dinosaurs? That would be uh, like Dr. Dinosaurs? Harris. But it's uh, only 18 <laughs> What? <laughs> Jenny, yes, the human true. girl, says, yes, uh, yes, sir. That's, uh, that's the one. Here? Here? Why? That's not they shouldn't they shouldn't be here right or else everything we know now is not right no no well, this is odd. well uh that's what we were hoping you could help us with but uh unfortunately uh that kind of escalated and jenny pulls back a curtain to the window overlooking the city uh, and you see the gore and scraps and flesh about the city, kind of like strewn apart in the distance, looking like a humongous beast exploded. Uh, the remains are just displayed kind of out in the distance across the building tops. So oh, no. the dinosaur is no. not here anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Yeah, the past tense so seems to be. A second. Uh, I'm just gonna take a second. Who did this? Uh, how how did this happen? Oh well, we don't know. Uh, right, that's why. That's okay. why we called you. Yes, yes. Um, okay. Um. Is anyone hurt? I suppose, other than the dinosaur, is anyone hurt? Oh. Uh, uh, no. Uh, the two of us, the three of us, the sharp look from, uh, from Strax, um, uh, the three of us did, uh, manage to get most of the city folk away from the area affected. Although there's some structural damages, uh, and you can kind of see as Vastra looks up, like just from the shaking of the buildings of the dinosaur walking through the streets of London, uh, there is like damage and, and ash. Is this a normal occurrence for 1890? No. Are there more dinosaurs that are going to explode? <sighs> I very much hope not. Um, so if it already exploded and there's no more than what, then, you know, what, what's, what's the problem? Well. Sorry, I don't think I'm following. No. If it, okay. if a dinosaur was here and it's not meant to be, that means that someone brought it here. And if they did it once, they could do it again. Like how you brought us here. <laughs> and we shouldn't be here. Well, we shouldn't be here. Why have you, you've done this a lot? You've done it twice now. 
I... I'm playing along. Well, I like playing, so that's okay. Um, so you're a trauma surgeon. Um, what do you two do? I feel like I recognize you, but Ernest, this is the first time we've met fairly surgeon. Well, oh, I've certainly never met you before. Well, currently unemployed, but I, I have my degree in archaeology, um, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm intending to work in, in you know, hopefully, I, I don't, I, I'm an archaeologist. No, that's perfect. We're dealing with dinosaurs. That's exactly what we need. And you, Siddha. You mind if I, I call you Siddha or should go to the lean? Sid is fine. I told yeah. you there'd be cool bones. Oh, full of flesh dinosaur. Oh my god, okay. I mean, where if you didn't come to 1890, you wouldn't get to see a, just a whole dinosaur. So, nothing uh, ventures, nothing gains. You're right. You're right. And Sid kind of turns her attention to the doctor and says, I'm a xenolinguist per unit. Oh, perfect. We're not perfect right now because we're dealing with dinosaurs and they are very much not aliens. But when we eventually do, I suppose I'm technically an alien to you, so it's already been very useful to you. Um, and I, I'll turn around and stare at uh, Lucretia for a moment. And it's just, I, I look like I'm about to say something and I just stare. Lucretia stares right back and like you can see like Again, like the the weird feeling from earlier, they're still trying to. Pr they're oh, oh. oh, we're good. We're resetting video. Okay. Um. Uh, still trying to process like, like that weird, almost deja vu feeling from earlier. Um, but Lucretia's almost in a state of like disbelief. Like they're like they're. Their facial expression is very much like, all right, like, y'all are very good actors, ha ha, funny, funny. Uh, <laughs> like, this, this is, this is great. Like, co-workers must have set this up for me to like get me to like loosen up. But whatever you, I see what you're trying to do, but I'm not falling for it. <laughs> okay, so we were late already. Let's not be any later necessary. I should go check out these bones. You should check out these bones with me. Ernest, you I... seem to be no bones. Well, we can check out these pieces and see if there's anything weird about it. Let's go. Okay. Wanna... Sure. I can do that. I'll help. You sure. Silly. You're more than welcome to stay here. I'm sure Madame Brasher, they have lovely tea here. It's a real in London. <sighs> I'm Talk done. Yeah? Stick with the two people I know. We can look at bones. Yes. Well, you should probably check if there's anyone in the city who is uh, needs a trauma surgeon after that explosion. So I just, maybe we can check it out. Took care of that. We can. We definitely need to check out these bones before anything else happens. I do want to see if I can get a scan. All right. Bone time. Bone uh. time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rush <laughs> out. <laughs> bone time. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, Madame Vastra and Jenny uh, kind of stop you all, and uh, <clears throat> I know that he uh, says that you'll all stay together, but that rarely happens. So here, uh, and strap to your wrist uh, small communicators. Um, What's this? It's like a walkie-talkie? Just so that we can keep in touch with you from here. Uh, ah, so like an escape room, like, oh, hello, okay. I don't know. Right. right. Uh, whatever. Uh, Under a time crunch, yeah, okay. Good luck, uh, good luck, doctor. And uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, she looks at the three, uh, doctors, and then also to the doctor, all of you, uh, and bows her head a little bit and graciously shows you out the door. Um, down towards the ground, uh, out in the city, in London, 
um, headed towards where the majority of the carnage is, uh, there's not, there's not a lot for you to go on because of the spread of this. However, I would like for Ernest uh, to give me uh, again, please tell me if you would like to do something else here. But to ascertain as much information as you can, I would like you to do resolve plus uh, intelligence or science, unless you have something else you'd like to use. I don't have an intelligence stat. Well, that, that would be knowledge. That would be knowledge. Knowledge. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Okay, not bad. Four, six, ten, five, two, seventeen. Seventeen. That's good. <laughs> Perfect. What you do notice as you do walk by the remains that have been scattered here. The explosion that tore this beast apart does not seem to be strong enough to have eviscerated it. There should be, the thing that you notice most is that there should be more of it here. Mm. Things are missing in a way that they should not be. Where'd all the flesh go? What? what do you mean? Well, a dinosaur like this, you know, it's it's pretty dense, pretty beefy. There's a lot of there's a lot of meat on them bones, and an explosion like that would have left a lot more carnage. It looks like some of it's already been cleaned up. Maybe there should be more meat here. That's that's a good point, actually. Thank you. I like. I like this one. I really like this one. Okay, give me a sec. And I'll pull out from a pocket my sonic screwdriver and just point and to start um, scanning as much as I can. Um, you just see this really, really, <laughs> there's no real way to describe it. It looks like a toy. Uh, it's almost like a torch um, with yes. a, a, a almost crystal green crystal on the tip of it that um, makes a very annoying whirring noise as he's pressing and looking around and Almost scanning, I guess is the best way to put it. Scanning the pieces. What is, what is, is that? that? Like an alien? Sita one? is like vibrating. Just, <laughs> it's just, it's the best day. I'm trying to figure what out what's happened here. My Sonic. With that. It's like a wand. Yeah. Like a no. magic wand. No. Oh. no. Sonic like the drive through. Sonic screwdriver. Sonic like oh, the it's clearly a Sonic screwdriver. Oh. <coughs> yes, anyway. Okay. Um. And I want to see what I see from this. Is there a particular role that the Sonic has on its own, or um, can I just uh, dictate it as normal? Yeah, as normal. And I, if, yeah. since I'm using my um, Sonic, I can use a story point that my Sonic has. If I need to. Thank you. That's what it is. Uh, okay. Exactly. Thank you. I was like, I know there's something that you yeah. get extra. Okay. Uh, so if you are primarily right now just trying to investigate, is that what we think is yeah. is the goal here? I, I think actually, I think right now what I'm trying to figure out is how we got here in the first place. Is there any residual energy um, of whatever brought it here? Because uh, that's that probably takes some significant temporal energy. I don't see if there's any of that left over. Um, is there some kind of signature to it, I suppose? Like, oh, this is clearly brought here by some Gallifreyan technology or some other kind. Is what I'm Great. Okay. Give me awareness and either knowledge or science. Both will get you different. Either one will get you different information. Okay. Depending on which one you add. Um, I think I'm going to go with science. <laughs> knowledge is higher, but I think I'm going to go with science because I feel like 
he's still trying to figure out what's going on with his going on in his brain right now. So he's not mm -hmm. he's not pulling on any past not um, past like experience or anything. He's um, just going pure science with the and what shows up on his um, screwdriver. Um, so he said awareness and uh, science. Yes. While uh, the doctor is doing that with his sonic screwdriver, uh, Ernest is going to be like looking around the rubble and stuff and kind of looking for, he, he thinks that somebody must have moved some of the carnage. So looking for like, I don't know, footprints, like signs of people dragging stuff away from the site. So that's what he's going to be investigating. Perfect. I would like you to uh, roll uh, awareness and knowledge. Cool. And if Sid and Lucretia would like to either help or also be searching, please let me know as well. I think for Lucretia, uh, she's looking around this area seeing that obviously something has happened here and i think her brain is just so overloaded right now with like all of this new information that's incredibly overwhelming um i'm piecing through it i think as fast as i can um being a trauma surgeon i think this is something i have to do very regularly for my mm -hmm. job and i think there's like the smallest part of the back of my brain saying well even in the one percent chance that this is real and that nobody's playing some massive prank on me or whatever like in the smallest chance that this is a real situation i would rather you know make sure that people aren't hurt so i think what they're doing is um looking for people who might be hurt or um in this like rubble because you described it was kind of like it, like it looks like like an explosion or something really yes mm -hmm. there's clearly boom. structural damage here yes yeah so I'm, I'm looking for any hurt people i think absolutely I'm... please give me awareness medicine lucretia and what about you said i think sid is looking for she's looking for traces of alien culture she's looking kind of like forensically at like are there are there scorch marks? Are what what are the breakage patterns in the structural damage? I think she's trying to see similar to what the doctor is looking for, but looking at it from a purely technological standpoint, trying to see if it's anything that she recognizes from her studies at UNIT from any specific alien culture. I got Perfect. a nineteen. Nineteen, Lucretia. Uh Sid, give me I would say, depending on what you feel, awareness or ingenuity plus science. Okay. Uh, they're just, awareness and ingenuity are the same score for me. So I think I will do, I think awareness, because I think it would be kind of like combing through what I already know. Perfect, okay. And then Ernest, also, what did you roll? 15. 15. I rolled a 20. 20. Woo! So we had a 20, a 19, did Lucretia say? 13. Okay. As you walk through the streets, <laughs> the doctor, you scan. Uh, it confirms what Ernest did say to you, but on an interesting scale, Ernest said pieces of this beast were missing. Upon scanning, very specific parts, not just like chunks of the animal, missing one organ gone one body part gone it is only these small specific pieces that are missing there could be no chaos factor to this you sense a deliberate
planned uh, removal of parts of this. Hmm. Uh, Lucretia, you yes. notice that the streets, as the strange ladies and gentlemen upstairs did tell you, the streets are quite bare. It does look like they did a good job at clearing people out uh, ahead of this incident as best as possible. There seems like there has been a, a barricade uh, in place around this section of the city uh, set up. And you notice that all of the businesses are closed down uh, and that there is not much sign of, of anyone in immediate danger. Except down the street a bit, just out of reach, you see a, a building on this same block that seems to have the lights on as though it were still in business, still open. Sid, you remember one of the older reports that you read, a report that Rose filed herself before she unfortunately left the dimension. A report of beings taking parts from biological creatures in order to survive. It's, it's hard to remember. This was probably a report you read right when you joined Hewnit. It was so early and so much has happened since then. But there is something familiar about this. Ernest, the final thing that any of you really are able to find here is that this Dinosaur was not, was transported here suddenly and kind of what feels abruptly in like a panicked way. You can look around you and see that it was almost like this, the signs of damage are confined to these few blocks. Mm. Like this dinosaur dropped suddenly into the middle of the street here, panicked and afraid. It would have can no I discern, reason. Sorry, can I discern no. whether or not like <coughs> the missing parts had been removed before the dinosaur being dropped here, or if it exploded and then they took the parts. Is that something I can tell? Uh, I don't know that that's something you can tell. I mm -hmm. think that if you were to ask the doctor, the doctor has, with that 20 would be able to answer your question. Mm. Is this something you deal with normally? Um, dinosaurs, Is this something yes. you do? Exploding dinosaurs, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, but no, you're right. These pieces, some of them have been very purposely taken. There's no, nowhere near enough of it left. Yeah. Who and why? Are you at all familiar with 
organ harvesting, like of, of living things. Oh, God. But it happens fairly often. I know Ye some of you humans do that quite a lot. Years ago at, at work, I read a report about some, some group or other that was taking parts of biological creatures uh something about this rings a bell i just it was so far back i can't remember what the subject of the report was and that gives us something to consider so they took the organs from the dinosaur dropped it here and blew it up Oh, Am I understanding this? Um, they dropped it here, blew it up, and took the stuff out? Maybe. Why Possibly. would you even want a dinosaur heart? You can't use that. For like a, I don't know. What if they didn't mean to drop it here? What if it was an accident? Hmm. And they were just getting rid of the evidence of the accident. Oh. I mean, would you drop a whole dinosaur in the middle of a city? I wouldn't no. blow one up, I don't think. Yes, I, I might put it up. in the city, though. It's a lot larger than they should be, too, which is interesting. Um, Lucretia. So you said I saw a building with the lights on. The lights on a business front, more particularly down the street. Cool. Yeah, because I've wandered away from the three of you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> in, good. Danger. Yeah. in danger, you know, as you do. As um, one does. I want to, like, just look in the windows. Do I see, like, people in there? You do. You see people. It looks like a restaurant. The sign on the window says Mancini's. Uh, in like a circular rounded font. Oh, like some kind of Italian place? I don't know. Is there a yeah. menu on the door? Uh, <laughs> there is not a menu posted on the door, but there are people inside. They appear to be seated at dining tables. There seem to be well dressed wait staff. Uh, you all notice at that point the doctor, you said Lucretia, Lucretia. and look. Where is Lucretia, did I? I didn't invent Lucretia. Lucretia was here, right? She was here. Look, okay, okay. I have done that before. Where are they? They will. I talk into my little watch thing, Lou. Oh, fancy. Do I hear it? Yes, you do. It pops through your wrist. Oh, this is cool. I feel like a spy or something. Me Hi. Too. <laughs> I feel like Sita. Uh, uh, oh, we're lo oh, we're looking for you. Are you okay? Are you okay? I grab my this... arm and talk into their wrist. Where are you? I. Didn't I tell you the first rule is never to... No, first That's rule the is doctor, the doctor, by the way. Lies. Second rule, never walk away from the doctor. That's me. You, I, you, I just you, never, you never told me that, but also okay, there's well, a I'm restaurant that that's now. open and oh. there's people in here. Well, we probably Men Mancini's. Mancini's. And like, oh. like I've turned around and I'm looking for... I, I think I can see them, like, down that way. Yes, you can still and I'm see just, them. Like, waving. Yes. And I'm like, look, look okay. to your left. We'll look to your left. Bye. Oh, over, oh, out. Yeah, sorry, here you go. Here's your Ten four. I'm back. At this moment, Lucretia, behind you, you hear the sort of bells of a door opening. Uh, a gentleman in a tuxedo pops his head out and says, How many can I seat you for? Uh, no, I'm not I'm not here to eat. I'm I'm with I'm waiting for my friends and I'm like waving them over. He does not appear to <laughs> Wait for a response and closes the door. And we will pick up right here <laughs> as you all oh, approach. What a weird the interaction. <laughs> completely normal person. <laughs> yeah. As we as we continue on this uh adventure, the Doctor Who Many Hearts Project. If we could just really quick just buzz around, yes. say hello who we are, your name and where to find you on the internet. I am Dylan or Super Dylan everywhere on the internet. That is where you can find me, and I've been the uh storyteller slash game master of this and will 
happily see you next week. Uh, uh, let's go uh to which 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 way do i want to go i'm so sorry uh let's go to drac next hi i'm draconics or drac you follow me on twitter at draconics that's d-r-a-k-o-n-i-q-e-s today and i guess for the rest of this little series i'll be the doctor i was gonna say your doctor i was like we have three others i'll be the doctor <laughs> um um and thank you everyone for watching i'm very excited to see what we go up to next uh okay i'm gonna throw it over to um, nala Jay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Nala or Jay. I use they, them. You can find me on Twitter at Nala Wu or at Nala Draws if you want to see my art. I'm a professional illustrator, voice actor, sensitivity reader, and cultural consultant, tabletop RPG content creator, and actual play stream performer. <clears throat> um, you can find me tomorrow on this same channel playing uh, Visions of Gold. It's a 5th edition Call of the Netherdeep campaign that's going to be uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a great, great cast. Um, our lovely producer here, May, is the GM for that. Um, but you can find me playing that game. Um, and yeah, that's me. Keep up with me on Twitter at Nalawu. I'm going to throw Beautiful. it to EJ. Hi everyone, I'm EJ. You can find me in chat. That's one big egg. You can also find me on Twitter at several big eggs. Um, I you can also find me on Stella Luna's channel on Friday nights, playing with our wonderful producer May and several other gay people. Um, <laughs> thank gay you all. People to only. <laughs> gay people only. It's still Pride Month over there. But uh, yeah, thank you all for having me on. Uh, I'm excited to play with you guys again next week, and huge thanks to May for letting us play on your channel. Thank you. Thank you, May. Uh, DK! That leaves me. Hi, hello, I'm DK. At Abba Darlings on Twitter. It's really the only place that I talk a lot, so look for me there. I talk a lot. Enough for several platforms. Uh, in approximately <laughs> 40 minutes, you can catch me over on my channel, Exquisite Corpse Presents, running Divine Intervention, which is a 5e homebrew about newborn gods. They recently went to therapy, and now they have to do some work, or things are going to get bad. God therapy. We have, there's a bee goddess who literally used to be a bee and is not happy about being human and keeps asking people for nectar, so you definitely Honestly, don't want to miss relatable. that. relatable. <laughs> Absolutely That's incredible. Me. Please join the rest of us as we go watch that uh after this uh thank you again to me uh for allowing us to use your channel and for producing for us this wonderful 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 i see you next week for the continuation of this new chapter in the doctor's story